All right, a new NGS headline. I don't think this one's going to be too crazy. So yeah, for this roadmap, there isn't like a whole lot really showing for the month of September. Just Nate, or not Nameless City, we just had that. Uh, the Ordinal Tower expansion, Ultra High Difficulty Party Quest, which that could just be a new rank of something or a completely new quest. Open for a new quest, but I don't really think so because it's not really tied with the new rank for Stia. You'd think it would be that if there was going to be a new one. And there's going to be like new cards for Line Strike and some new collab. So not a whole lot. And actually not showing any seasonal event. I mean, it shows the Halloween 24, but that's in this like October, right? So we got a weird period of probably like not too much. And that kind of shows with the headline itself, just looking at the time, it's only like 40 minutes, which a chunk of that in the beginning is just this screen, which is nothing. They usually at the the end it's the same thing so this means it's going to be pretty short when the other headlines have been like 50 minutes plus or even an hour so yeah I, i'm gonna expect this one not to be too great but you know that's just kind of a a given <laughs> let's just uh get into it and see what happens maybe we will be we will be surprised by a thing here or there if you haven't had a chance to try mars yet i encourage you well, to I've give had it a, a chance shot. Now, once again, it's all this right, program it's all right. is to inform players about the current operation and upcoming updates of Sega's online RPG, yeah, it wasn't too PSO2 crazy. New Genesis, it was like it's also known as NGS. We will also share details about exciting campaigns and peripheral information and discuss the I didn't present really feel and future too much either NGS way with Mars. players. I kind of just like wish pre-recorded broadcast that like instead of the Mars thing, they just added more to the classes that exist. This just feels like a tacked on thing where you're kind of almost forced to use it. Like you don't have to use it, but you're kind of forced to use it. It has like nothing to do with the class that you're playing. It's just a completely different, essentially, class that you spend like about a fourth of your time using <laughs> when you're playing the game. So I was like, eh, I, I don't know. I don't really if like If you would concept. like to watch it in Japanese, you can check it out on the Japanese NGS YouTube channel. Honestly, to me, it just feels like I just use it during uh, breaks for UQ, and that's about it. Using the Hydro Termination because it's just big damage. <laughs> like, you can use it for other things, but just not very good. To use it for those things than just your normal gameplay. Without further ado, let's move on to the updates you've all been waiting for. Yes. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got coming up. In this episode, we would like to share some information about the September updates. Let's start with the video. Okay, I got the music going. Old ham. Kind of sounds... Are they, are they going to show the Ultra Quest right now? As I said, doesn't that sound like Dalian? Okay, so it's just a new rank of Dalian. Um, hopefully it's like, uh, the Solus rank 2, where they change it up. Yeah, now it's new attacks. Okay, good. Good. Up to four players can fight together. Yeah, same kind of conditions. So there's a time limit. Five deaths. Oh, what the? Oh! That's the spinny wall of death. Just like in Solus. Oh, God. I mean, it looks like you still use the mobile cannon a lot. I think like the other difference that I saw was like the elemental attacks were a bit different as well. Yeah, like, uh, that's a way bigger elemental attack, yeah. Yeah, it looks like those elemental attacks are going to be a bit more annoying. You know what would be interesting is if like they did the elemental attacks during the mobile cannon phase. <laughs> that looks like it'll be okay. It's like whatever. Now, I personally liked uh, Dallion didn't mind the mobile cannon section, but I know a lot of people did not like how long it went. It's kind of like a similar situation with like uh, the Mars that we just talked about, right? You're kind of just forced to use a thing for a long period of time that you may not want to use. I guess it's similar to that. All right, so this time quest, Zenith Firefight, the lemon. So ruinous boss enemies atop the seal. 
okay. So it's just an LTQ at just like the end, pretty much. Lucille killing. Well, they're both there at the same time. What the fuck? The Agile Rune Angel. Oh, isn't that, uh... That's one of the, like, episode... It's episode 6 bosses. Mars Battery Charger, take down your enemy. I like the look of that boss. Jesus. Ooh. <laughs> Episode 6 AIS only fight? Hmm. So I guess you're probably gonna be encouraged to use the Mars thing during that, huh? That's neat. That's part of the season pass. Or the mission pass. Can I just get that for free? That's not bad. Not bad mission pass stuff. It's just scratch ticket, shadow blade, knife. Uh, I mean, I kind of like it. I mean, that looks good. Interesting. That's just the cape, right? Yeah, that's the cape. Yeah, I'll probably drop some stuff out of this. The Edgelord Night Scratch. Be on the Edgelord. And I don't know if I'd grab the T1 out. This kind of depends on how you can color change it. Craft glasses. Eh. I just got throwing some random stuff in there too. As always. That chain mail? On the, the, the tiger print? Wait. You can get that cage as a poor of a hologram now. <laughs> They're just gonna run around put, popping the cage onto people. <laughs> put you in prison. Nice. Ooh. That looks good. I like that weapon camo. Nakatana. Oh. Oh, that's fine. That, that camo looks good. The washing back. Oh, no. Embrace. Oh, this is, uh, I guess it's the ERP scratch now. <laughs> Uh, just gotta always throw that in, right? Magic incantation? Potion. I guess it'd be kind of cool if there was also a camo that was the book. They could keep it out when also attacking. Like, say, like, for Talus or something. Something along those lines. Because like every time you attack, it's just gonna like go away, right? What did you think? Let me go through the details with these slides. Starting with this. Okay, so there wasn't a whole lot. Starting September 3rd, rank two comes to the high difficulty quest, major target suppression mission, Planet Crusher Blitz. The suppression target is Malignant Dark Falls. Yeah, I think I'll do the same thing with what I did with uh... So this R2 is like, I'll try to beat it like day one or something. Let's go ham on it. It's like, once I beat it, it kind of just depends on the rewards. If the rewards are just like, meh, then like, I'll maybe do it once a week for the star gems. But I mean, I, I like when they do this, like if they're going to reuse something, change it up a bit every time. Dalian, instead of it just being an extremely guess, powerful you know, enemy new rank, that has health. evolved even crap. further from rank one. 100% chance of mere rewards probably. Moveset. Because it's before like the Stia, like new rank and before we get the evolved thing for the Exelio weapons and the Tassus armors, it's most likely not gonna give any new like gear, right? So yeah, it's probably not gonna have much. Yeah, maybe you can get Exelio in this, maybe. But I think Exelio's already gotten Along pretty with cheap. the addition of rank, the new limited time quest, Zenith Firefight, starts on September 10th. All right, so the only thing this week is the Dalian thing. Okay. Yeah, with this LTQ, it's probably just gonna be similar to other LTQs, where it's gonna give a decent spread of rewards. I mean, I like the... Set at the, the top of Lucille, 
In this quest is a series of battles against powerful enemies, including the new ruinous boss enemy, Ruin Angel. Ruin Angel is a formidable opponent that uses its agility to chain melee and ranged attacks together. Make full use of the Mars battery charger in the field to destroy this person. I pretty much want you to use the Mars thing for that, for the battery. Please note that the acceptance requirements for this quest include being able to use Mars. So be sure to complete the main task, Mars arrives first. Yes, yeah, so you need to have Mars, pretty much, is what they just said. <laughs> to be able to participate, but at this point in the game, you have to be like a veteran player that refused to do the quest. Because uh, I, I believe the Mars is available to you after Chapter 1 of the game. So, like, after Alio. Yeah, no Mars, no Axis. Yeah. <laughs> so if you refuse to, for some reason, grab it, then, yeah, you gotta grab it. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be, like... Limited time tasks and need, title I'll tasks you. will also be added one along with this quest. Titles, if I'm gonna be honest, the, the, the base game bosses are better than the NGS bosses. I know... Like, I know I complain a lot about, like, reusing stuff, but, like, <laughs> any new stuff they've done for N NGS, like, boss-wise, just hasn't been too great besides, like, the bigger ones. Like, the four-man, uh, like, bosses. But, the, like, just the, the... The regular bosses... Yeah, not, not... There isn't, like, too many that are, like... Great. Or, like, memorable. Like, maybe just memorable because you've done them, like, hundreds of times, but... <laughs> now let's see what's coming in the second half of the month. So, the first half was just the ten minutes, like, just that. So the first half of, first half of September kind of, kind of sucks. Alright, well... With this video. Let's keep going. <laughs> let's hope the second half has a bit more to it. I mean, it looks like it, but... They still got, like, the Operation Report campaigns at the end, whatever else they want to show. Well, we'll see. Now look like September is gonna be filled with things. All right, so here's the new rank for Ordinal Tower. So it's just a singular rank. Rank eight is a five-floor tower-type field with a trial on each floor. Why does that sound like Geometric Labyrinth? <laughs> Guys, it sounds like Geo Lab. Okay. Oh, there's this little guy again. Okay. What is that, uh, Calcundo Starless? Yeah, so just like the little Starless. Oh, there's like the triple headed dog thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, depending on how they do the floors, I guess, like with the trials and stuff, like how it all flows, like maybe it could be fun. Uh, it looks like just like a boss rush, though. Like, if, it, it feels like a purple trigger, but with extra steps. Yeah, the Drive Eris and the Drive Lissy. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a purple trigger, but with extra steps. To me. Uh, we'll, we'll see when it releases. They didn't really show a whole lot. Maybe they'll say more in the slides. Alright, L2Q Polaris Fire okay, that's That sounds very similar to... Yeah, another l 2 so... Take it on alone? So this is like a solo LTQ? Interesting. That's it's solo. I wonder if it's gonna actually be difficult or now that I've expected them to do a solo LTQ. Title pass for putting it with S3. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if people are going to complain about that. So I'm sure there's like some casual people that would want to do it and also get the title that's going to be limited. But maybe they won't be able to do it in time. Because like they don't have like the skill set or the, the gear, whatever. I mean, here's your heads up if you want it, I guess. <laughs> you got a few weeks until it comes out. Casuals and shambles, yeah. It also really depends on the rewards, too. If it's going to be similar to the other LTQ, if it's going to give, like, more or less, I, I don't know. 
my, I'm, I'm leaning towards about to be the same kind of rewards. Okay, so new cards for Lion Strike. What kind of cards are we going to see? This is the 18th. Trust in the and GS characters, ew! Ew, I didn't want to see that. Nasty. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> I don't know, they could have gone like multiple ways with it, like the other Fantasy Star games, but yeah, they went with NGS. That, that's probably easiest. It looks like they're using already existing artwork for it. Bonds we formed through our training. Alt Bane. I'm ready. Just say the word. Barrier. What the? Well, what did that do? Barriers on everything? I mean, it's not like the cards can. I guess they. I don't know, maybe it prevents like them being fucked with or debuffed or something. Yeah, it looked like that it canceled the debuff. Move out. Commencing operation. Okay. Uh, wait, what the? Did it just consume the cards and give you points back? Okay, so Lion Strike's gonna completely change with those cards. Oh no, the meta is gonna completely change. I mean, it's not like many people were messing around with the meta, but like it's gonna change. All right, here's the collab. Kaiju number eight. It's not like. A super recent anime? Didn't that come out like this year? I think I've seen some like clips on it and stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's on login bonus, and there's probably a scratch for it, whatnot. Avatar items, voice tickets to morph into Re Reino Ichikawa, Kikoru Shinomiya, Mina Ashiro, and Soshiro Hoshina from the Defense Force. Sounds like there's actually gonna be quite a bit in this. I mean, I'm not too much of a fan of the outfit because it seems pretty plain. But that also might be a pro to people as well. I just like mess around with it accessories on it and stuff. Make it your own. <laughs> that guy's got a goofy ass bowl cut. You guys see that? <laughs> what was that bowl cut? That. Like, what is this? What is this hairstyle? It's like all chopped up. It's like someone just took a pair of scissors and just like randomized where it went. Just like chop. And you know, maybe this way. Chop. 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 <laughs> like, what is that? The so full body suits transform into Kaiju number eight. Wait, as a scratch count bonus? What the fuck? This is. You can't make the main character or whatever. I mean, I'm assuming this is the main character. I haven't watched the show. But why is the main character the scratch count bonus? What the fuck? <laughs> This is like, uh, well, what was it? Veroni Kenshin or whatever? What was it? No. Yes? I don't remember what the collab was, but where they put the camo in the Scratch Cup bonus and people got pissed off? This is like even worse than that. This is even worse. I would rather just like one of these random bums be in there. <laughs> like, oh my god. Stands the voice lines, guy. <laughs> Better be sellable. Yeah, it could still be sellable, but it's still kind of. I mean, it limits how many can be in the shop because, like, the scratch count bonuses, you can only get them once. So. <laughs> I'm much That's a nice artwork. This is for uh, your backdrop. Uh, looks like there's some vital gauges as well. Also, oh, there are some camos. Defense Force rifle. A giant just axe. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. That's a launcher, right? Yeah. Kind of weird that a minigun is like that, but. <laughs> a little knife. Nice, nice. 
Oh yeah. So there's a couple of V notes. Are they just like posing with the weapon? Um. So yeah, I hope uh, that outfit can be sold. If not, that's just gonna be a huge rip. Uh, but another LTQ unidentified region. Oh boy, I love those. Those are my favorite. Yeah, let's all compete for quest points that don't fucking do anything. Yay! Well, Unless they added something different. They got the crates in there, I guess. <laughs> That's fine. This is like a set time. You just kill stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just. Mac a doodle. I don't know. You can use Mars in there. Might as well just get your Mars skills in there for the week. <laughs> but yeah, there's no seasonal event uh, this month. It's not going to be until, like, October or something. So it's probably just going to be, like, special scratch tickets that you get out of the LTQs or other junk. <laughs> yeah, another AC scratch ticket. Stylish Autumn. So this might yeah, be casual stuff. This might be popular. And it's, like, a, a dress. Got a denim jacket. Why do we get so many, like, butler outfits or, like, dress stuff as like t1 i want less of that i want like actual casual stuff <laughs> like there's so many just like formal wear kind of t1 outfits oh there's a cool i mean we get so much of it though we get so much it's like why can't we get like like when they're gonna make a casual scratch actually make it casual this is like at best like business casual so i guess you can consider it casual <laughs> because men are servants. Wow. Oh my god. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong. <laughs> well, let's see what else he's got. I mean, I'll probably get it anyways because it's going to be like 100,000 to seven or something. Is there like a booty window on that? What was that? Earrings. Some got some shoes. I didn't really expect it to be crazy, anyways. I expected it to be like a meh month. But there was a couple stuff I saw the road map that I was like, oh, it could be good. What are those eyes? Alright, just some random stuff thrown in. Lockdown indicator and gothic theme. Portable holiday. So, okay. Besties! Well, that's probably gonna be expensive. Oh no. What's with all the ERP like emotes this month? Oh my god. <laughs> like, every scratch has some. Every single scratch. Jesus Christ. I mean, I guess they just gotta. Just went balls to the walls. They, they just know. They need a little bit of extra cash right now, I guess. This is how NGS killed Blue Protocol. True! They knew their audience. They harnessed it. <laughs> they monetized their what audience you think? very well. Let's look at a summary of the updates with some slides. Uh, Treasure Scratch 5 is also headed your way. Snap up a rich variety of items in this Treasure special scratch, scratch ticket. I wonder if it's going to be updated in any way, or if it's going to have the same stuff as last time. I feel like the Treasure Scratch is getting a little bit outdated with some of the things it has. To play these Scratch tickets, use Treasure Scratch Ticket Volume 5, junk. which drops from urgent quests and limited time daily tasks. Strike is also getting some love. Well, they actually show the skills for the new cards. Okay, so Worthy Opponent. Passive skill increases attack based on the number of target enemies. Okay, so basically, if there's more enemies that has higher attack <laughs> all right uh solidarity increased attack based on the number of ally element types on the field excluding this card so the more different elements that you have the higher the attack okay interesting so that plays more into playing more elements which i think right now you kind of only want to use like three maybe four kind of just depends uh, i think this will actually be more beneficial if you have like the Rappy wild card and the Nyao wild card, since those technically are still elements. 
like the light element and lightning element. So maybe you just have those in there, and then you play other elements to then make more use of this uh, solidarity card. Whoever has it. Um, all terrain. Passive scale moves cards in the direction of the arrow at the start of the turn and increases their attack. I think that's what, what Ina was doing. So it just like keeps moving, and if it does move, then it gets it back. So it can do it to itself or to other cards. Interesting. Okay. Um, but it, because it's a move and not like a swap, you don't want to like put things in its way, otherwise it won't buff the cards. Um, technique support, passive skill, enhances enemy debuff effects of allies. Okay, so that makes your debuffs that you do stronger, I believe is what that means. Uh, summoning seal, when summoned, prevents summoning on the targeted square for the next turn. Interesting. So that could be very good for the, like, near the end of the game. <laughs> so it's just like, nope, you can't put something in there. <laughs> just can't put any card there for the next turn. That could really screw somebody over, oh my god. Th these are, like, Almost like must have. I know the technique su technique support is going to be huge for uh, the ice element because there's like so many debuff, debuff cards with that, and that would make it so much better than what it is. Because I personally felt like the ice deck was a bit weak because just how debuff works. But this might make it better. Barrier nullifies any attack, debuff, stun, or other disrupt effect one time only on the selected ally. I thought it was just for debuff, but it's also for stuns and other things. What the? Does disrupt effect also mean move? Can it prevent moves? I think that could also be huge. So barrier might completely fuck with like the current meta because the the current meta is like a lot of stuns and moving cards around like with wind and dark. So with barrier, that's gonna prevent a lot of that. I mean, it's still like only a one time only. But uh, that's going to be pretty useful, I think. These all sound pretty good so far. Let's see. PP down decreases battle opponent's PP when activated. Cannot make PP negative. <laughs> you can't have an inverted PP. Not allowed. Um, restitution when activated in exchange for destroying the selected allies. Yeah, we saw that. Uh, raises PP in accordance with the number of allies destroyed. So I guess if you're like done with those cards, you can eat them into the void. It could also be useful for, like, multiple elements, too. Because, uh, like, with how the game works, you can only replace cards of the same element. So, like, maybe if you wanted to use a different element there, but you don't have, like, a wild card kind of deal, then you could delete it from existence with this restitution. <laughs> and then put some other element kind of thing there. So that, so that could be good. Yeah, these all sound pretty good. I, I think, like, the... The weakest one, potentially, is probably the PP down, just because of, like, the niche use, maybe, depending on how it works. Or, uh, like, I don't know, the all-terrain. Something like that. Yeah, but we'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, it, it, it all sounds like must-haves, though. <laughs> like, must-haves. Like, they all just sound very, very good. Like, if you don't have these, it's gonna be hard. A hard time. I guess you just gotta get lucky with pulling, oh boy, or spend your money, woohoo! Uh, for those that care about Line Strike, that is. Uh, I know I heard them say, I think it was like on Twitter or some somewhere, that it will be easier to obtain the older cards. Like, there will be some sort of exchange with the older cards. So, like, as they add new cards, it'll be easier to get the previous cards. I kind of would just wish that they would just give you uh, an exchange ticket, kind of just like with other scratches. <laughs> so they can just, or like a selector ticket, and just select the exact card that you want. Every so and so polls, just make it that way. Why does it have to be, you know, some other convoluted stuff? <laughs> Scratch count bonus EX version motion changes plus popular comeback items and PSO2 specs. Okay, so it looks like it's some NGS things and also base game things. And I see even this uh, ghost. I think people use this ghost a lot for like hiding under stuff, right? Like they like covered the ghost and like made it like completely different with like accessories. There's like something weird you could do with it. So we can make the ghosts like hidden and then just be like accessories. <laughs> I, I don't know. Now, yeah, Rewind Collection might be some good stuff that uh, you missed out on from the past. And it looks like that is it. So it's going into the operation report. NGS, NGS operation, operation report. report. For this segment, the NGS operation report. 
iHero Arise select questions and comments from the players to bring to the development and live right. operation teams Order the and bring you their answers. Say. Yeah, honestly, lately this has been the most interesting part of the headlines. We would like to thank all the ARCs out there for what are they continuing thinking? to play NGS. First off, I would like to tell you about the limited time quests releasing in September. Zenith okay. Firefight and Polaris Firefight. All right, so the two interesting ones. Over a month has passed since the release of Mars. And we felt that, now that players have had some time to train up and get used to the feature, <laughs> to train up. you needed a new boss enemy to sink your teeth into. Therefore, we decided to prepare Ruin Angel, an NGS buffed version of Nemesis Angel, and release it with the Zenith Firefight to provide you with a fun fight. Then, right. a week later, we'll be dropping Polaris Firefight, which is designed to be played solo for those who want even tenser thrills in battle. There are no major differences in the rewards that players can get from the two fights, except for the title for having completed the S rank in Polaris Firefight. So please enjoy so whichever quest best suits your style of play. Pretty much. Uh, Next up is, uh, is like the the first LTQ with like the group play going to go away when the solo one appears. Or are they going to be both active at the same time? Yeah, just for title and bragging right, I guess. I mean, I guess that's fine. I mean, I kind of expected it to be, uh, you know, just like same kind of rewards anyways. Is it just how they've uh, done that stuff? Like the challenging stuff is either just like as rewarding as other things or less. So it kind of just makes sense. I think they're just like trying to test how the solo stuff is going to be. Cosmetic drops. When you want cosmetic drops in the LTQs, there's already been that. There's already been that before with like the Sonic LTQ and uh, what was it? There's something with like the Giant Mutants I know that was also part of like some LTQs. There's like, a couple of camos. Yeah, I don't think I want that with LTQs. Just because of how rare they are. The Sonic ones weren't very rare. I mean, like, for the most part, the reason is for the drops themselves that, you know, it's like you either sell from a set of, or you use. You have tons of the other drops. Well, not everybody else does. <laughs> yeah, it gets everybody together to mass farm something. I mean, personally, I don't want stuff like that in limited content unless it's going to repeatedly show up. Like, they can add cosmetics to LTQs as long as they keep showing up. If it's only like, oh, this is only available for this LTQ, and if you didn't get it, well, fuck you. Yeah, whatever. You didn't get it. That would be so fucking shitty. I hate that. Like, they can do limited time cosmetics with seasonal events that you just get with points. That's completely fine, because it's, like, super easy to just get the points, and it's guaranteed. But if it's like drop chance based and with how cosmetics usually are, where they're super rare, only like two people are going to get it <laughs> or something. And it's just so stupid. But yeah, if they uh, if they make it like LTQs, just keep having that cosmetic or if it's like a seasonal thing, like there's like a seasonal LTQ or a seasonal UQ or something. Because, you know, like in the past, like last, I think last year they had uh, like a Halloween urgent quest. So if there was like a Halloween, like Halloween set of cosmetics tied to that UQ, but it just kept happening every year, then that's fine. Like that would be completely fine. Because it would be tied to the season and you know it's going to be coming up the next year. That's completely fine. But if it's just like one and done, never again, I would not. I would not have that. If it's like chance based, I would not have that at all. One and done is better than the other. Shut up. Shut up. You're either just trolling me or you fucking suck. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. You stink. You stink. That would, that, that would, like, what would be the point of that? Like, wouldn't you just be upset to, like, not get that? You'd be like, but I would just get it, though. <laughs> I would just get it. Hey, you would get it, yeah? You would just get it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I just guessed you. Gotcha. That's. Yeah, Continue. 
I already said my piece on it. Sorry to have kept you all waiting. At long last, yeah, just be that guy. the characters of NGS will finally be joining the fray. Right, this so time around, match. a number of cards... I wonder how popular Line Strike is, because from what I've seen, you know, people tried it out in like the first few days or the first week, and then it fell off real hard. And it's like very hard to find a match. Like very, very hard. Like the tournament that was just held had a decent you know, amount of people playing in it because it was like a focused, like we're playing during this time kind of deal. But like just matchmaking in general for it, it just there isn't a whole lot. Like there was one time where I was waiting over 20 minutes. And this wasn't just on ship three. This was on like ship two as well. Where I was just waiting extended periods of time to get a match. And I was just like, well, I'm not sitting here forever. I just canceled it and left. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like people are playing it a whole lot. I, I don't know. This will be added that are expected to significantly change things up. Is the matchmaking weird too? Like it's block based? Um, it It's not exactly block based. It uh, chooses people in your block first. Like it searches through your block first. And then if it can't find anybody, then it searches other blocks, I believe. Yes, you can win trade. Absolutely. You absolutely can, because of how it works and how little people uh, play line strike. At long last, the characters of NGS will finally be joining the fray. But this time around, <laughs> a number of cards will be added that are expected to significantly change things up from the first batch. The passive it skill does technique change. support for ice element characters Ron and Manon gives a plus one effect value to enemy debuffs by allies. This makes it easier to build decks centered around debuffing the enemy, something the ice element excels at. In addition, the PP down effect of Thule and Kanui works well against PP conservation tactics and cards that increase PP. Oh, yeah, I guess, the I guess it does support. Yeah, I don't think about that. I guess it does counter uh, Pia's that give PP. So you could have like a, oh, you get negative once and then it just doesn't give the PP. <laughs> I, I guess it does do that. Okay. The abuser's about to get canceled. Yeah. Do you want to watch the tourney? Are you talking about, like, the IRL one? Or what? I think they're talking about the IRL one. That was in Japan. Right? So I, I don't think there's any other tournament, like, global that had, like, the new cards. But yeah, there, there was, like, a tournament in Japan, IRL, where they had physical cards for this line strike. And they used, like, the new cards and stuff, which is kind of neat. I, I mean, I didn't watch it, because I didn't know it was, like, shown. <laughs> I, I, like, you know recorded and put somewhere and also it's not like i would be able to really understand what was happening because it'd all be japanese <laughs> yeah there was there was a tournament at like sega hq or something finally we would like to provide more details about the 11 star excelio weapon series oh, this is the evolving and the 10 thing. star ectasis this could be huge both of which were released in August. Since the purpose of this update is to encourage people to use their enhanced equipment for a longer period of time, we have designed the equipment to inherit various equipment-based parameters when evolving, Okay. such as enhancement level, potential level, preset skills, augments, and multi-weaponization. And multi- Okay, so basically everything. That's good to hear. So when you evolve these or enhance them to the next set of weapons or arm or whatever, yeah, it keeps like all of that. That's actually kind of crazy. I, I did not expect uh, Fix uh, to be part of that or the multi-weapon. Yeah, since all that stuff is included, and that's pretty good. That, that's way better than what uh, Kazar was. I guess there's no worry there. So you are fine to uh, like upgrade the Exelios then and the Tassis, since it's going to keep all that stuff. But do keep in mind that, I mean, the Tassus should be fine, because, like, that should be still best in slot when it has, like, the Evolve thing. But with the weapon, I'm not so sure still. Because, like, I think it will be better than Wingard, but I just have, I don't know, the, the, this feeling that there's going to be a new rare weapon to chase, too. So if you're looking for the best of the best, I don't think this Exelio is going to do that. And if it is, it's not going to be for very long. 
Because, like, we have the Stia update. The update to Stia coming out, you know, in October, which, when this is happening, so most likely there's going to be a rare weapon drop alongside that. So there's going to be the rare thing to still chase. That's going to be, like, a bit better than the Evolved Exelio. But, of course, it's going to be, you know, rare, right? <laughs> it's going to be expensive to buy from somebody else. Whatever. So going this Exelio route was probably going to be the safe bet for the majority of players. They don't care about having the absolute best. What's more? Well, we had introduced this. Yeah, the, yeah, CV, yeah, CV is not part of it, at least from what they said. As a new feature to the item lab in the last letter from the dev team, we changed our policy to make it more convenient and are now implementing it as a feature with the item trader. We'll have more info for you in the next NGS headline. Wait, so they said it was going to be in the item lab, so now it's going to be with the item trader? I mean, does, does it matter? I mean, doesn't the item trader already have like a ton of tabs? They said it was about accessibility, right? I feel like it'd be more clear if it was in the item lab for like a to evolve thing. And it's with the rest of the trade in stuff, which is already like a bajillion tabs for that. I mean, whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I just don't understand how that has more to do with accessibility. And it makes no sense. <laughs> but okay. Yeah, I like that. I like, I like that they said that Thank you now for instead of like waiting until like last minute to say it. Or for them to just release it and for us to figure it out. I mean, I guess it's just like with other bots to exchange for weapons and armor is, so I guess that makes sense. Continuing on to the next section, I'll have answers from the development and live operations teams to player questions and comments. It's hard. Oh my god, please make this better, please. I'm guessing if they have this as a question, they're gonna make it better. To search for EX augments, could you it's make so the feature bad. easier to use? Because of the letter system. Here's their answer. We plan to make it possible in the augment preset skill search settings to include a question mark at the end of an EX augment. Question mark? Such as EX light attack protect. Such as EX light attack protect question mark. Yeah, just like a stand in for the letter, pretty much. Question mark just is like any of them. All right, so that's good. So you'll be able to just search that particular EX augment and then any of the variant variants of that said augment. Thank fucking God. They really needed that as soon as it happened. Like, how do they think, like, just dropping it as is was going to be, like, good? Like, holy shit. Well, at least they're fixing it now. To search for all other similar augments. We are pushing to include this in a December update. So December? That's forever! December! Oh my god. That's that's how many months away? That's still like three months away. God damn it. Well, I mean it's better late than never, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a little Christmas gift for us. Wow. Something that we should have just had already. Alright, but yeah, it, it's happening, but yeah, it's gonna be a minute. I wish they just still made uh Searching through the shop, just better in general. <laughs> Not just, like, for EX augments. Just allow us to search, you know, things partially in the personal shop. But I don't think they're ever going to do that. Let's move on to the next question. New face options were added back in April. Are there any plans to release more in the future? Here is their answer. We are currently working on face presets that will allow for more anime-like expressions. Anime-like? These are set to release in October. We will also add some sample faces, so players who struggle to make cute faces can also have fun. That was oh, they're just going to make, like, presets. Okay. Uh, for those new face options. So there's going to be new face options soon in October. Uh, but they said anime-like. I wonder if they're, like... Oh, we're just gonna rip the ones from Blue Protocol and put it in this game. <laughs> we stole it. We're gonna make it look like Blue Protocol for those that uh, wanted that game, right? <laughs> uh, what was their answer? Let's move on to the next question. The Mars Training Center is not only a place to practice using Mars, but also for trying out various actions. Can you please make it so? Yeah, this I don't will know why. 
they made it an LTQ. Like, why limited time? Please tell me that they're just going to make it permanent. Playable? Here's their answer. Here's their answer. No. <laughs> we are considering adding some more features to the Mars Training Center to make it easier to try out a variety of actions, as well as releasing it as a standing quest. The target date for this is around December. December! <laughs> Again! Tight until this is implemented. Why is everything December? What the fuck? Okay, so they are planning on updating it. So as it is now is not how it's going to be forever. I guess that's why it's like limited. So they're going to change it up and then make it permanent in December. Okay. It's still just that's so strange. Just now. Today. Like, why couldn't they just made it a standing quest now and then just update it later? They'll permanently remove it. God damn it. Yeah, why, why couldn't they just make it a standing quest now and then just update it? It's I, their their logic just confuses me. And yeah, the not, game not, using not bad, the not, not, not bad. This just kind of silly that like some of the stuff is in December, but yeah, it's gonna happen. I mean, it was questions that I actually were thinking, like the EX augments for sure, Mars Training Center for sure, and then like the thing with the. Excelia weapons and attacks armor. Yeah, that's pretty good. Satellite, Satellite information. information. All right, so this is just campaign stuff. Now let's move on from updates see what they got. and talk about some other NGS-related info. The Play NGS Ultra Build-Up Battle Power. Yeah, this uh, started already. So it looks like, yeah, this is going to be here forever. But it's like a 10-a-day scratch that it's just like a giant pool of items. Like just a bajillion items. Um, where is it? Yeah, right here. There's just, like, so many items. There's, like, I, there's several hundred, for sure. I don't know the exact number, but I feel like it's, like, 300 plus, 400 something items. A, a lot of it's, like, just previous SG stuff from NGS, but there's also things from base game uh, SG scratches as well. I don't know if people really care for that, but they're the more common... <laughs> So that could be a good or bad thing to you. But then at the top is the most common stuff, which I think is a shame. This kind of ruins the rest of the scratch because it's supposed to be like, oh, you get all these extra cosmetics. But then there's like the preset skill stuff, which I mean, it can be useful, but you can also just get this in other places. And uh, this is like the most common thing. So you're going to get this a lot with this uh, free scratch. And then there's like Mastery LCS. Not just the regular, like, Mastery 4. This is, like, the LC version, which is super easy to get already. Just from, like, almost anything out there. So this is just, like, bad. Same with Halfinale LCS. I mean, at least it's better than Mastery, but, like, once again, like, it's just a very outdated thing that's super common. Yeah, I know it's for new players, but, like, it's already super easy. Like, it's super easy to get LCs. Incredibly, incredibly easy. I think that, like, it would be better for them to, like, get the cosmetics that they missed out on than to get something that's, like, very temporary and easily obtainable. And also, this is limited to 100 pulls. So once you get through the 100 pulls or, like, the 10 days worth, you will not get any more. Unless if they update it to where you can, but like, as it currently stands, you only get 100. So if the majority is just going to be this, you're not going to... You're, like, barely gonna make a dent in any of this. Like, these hundreds and hundreds of items. You ain't gonna get shit. You're gonna get barely anything. I know I did my 10 pull today, and, I, like, half of it was this stuff. And it's, like, once if you wanted something specific, like, there's no way. Because I'm pretty sure every single item in here is not tradable. You can't trade it with other people in the personal shops, so and there's no way to buy it. So you have to get it in a scratch like this. So it's just, it's so stupid to me. It's so incredibly stupid that, like, it's set up this way. I mean, it's just, like, three items that we, you know, want to have anyways. So, I mean, can't really complain about it too much. <laughs> but, um, just, just the fact that, like, this is in here mixed with it. And there's just, like, so many items. Like, it, it's such a huge spread that you have, like, no chance of getting even a, you know, a decent amount. <laughs> it, 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 it just... I don't know. It, it's just so weird to me. But, you know, it just it's just free cosmetics, so you can't really complain about it too much, to be honest. It's like, if you really wanted, like, some of this stuff, you, like, just should have been there for it. Like, when it was a more narrow scratch for some of these things in the past. But, but yeah.
And like some of the stuff they've uh, reran a few times, and they'll probably rerun again. <laughs> for SG badges? Yeah, I guess so. You can use it for SG badges. Yeah, there's no selector because it's not like a like a scratch that you actually scratch on, like with star gems or AC, whatever. It's just like free pulls. And the free pull stuff never gives you uh, selector ticket things. Up to a total of 100 of these scratch tickets can be drawn. And they include augment capsules such as C Gladia Soul LCS. And Gladia? Gladia, huh? Yeah, where's that? <laughs> yeah, where? Huh? Gladia? Gladia? Where? Gladi Gladia Soul? Hmm? Don't go? Where? I don't I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere. Where's the Gladius Soul? Where is it? It's not there. And C Gigas Mast LCS. Oh G Gigas Mast? G Gigas Mast? Hmm? Where's that? I don't I don't see it. I I don't I don't see it. Where is it? Like it's not a big deal. I just, I just find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why they would say Giga Smash and Gladius Soul uh, doesn't use either of those. In addition, a number of other fantabulous campaigns will be held. Fantabulous. Treasure Scratch and an enhancement support campaign to make item enhancement easier. Oh, yeah, here, here's the big revamp. So this is going to change a few things. They'll, they'll probably talk about it. This event will now cover two separate three-day periods, from the 1st to the 3rd, and from the 21st to the 23rd of each month. Plus, there are even more perks for premium users, so be sure to give it a try. Okay, they're not going to talk about it. Okay, so they changed this quite a bit. So, it's still at the same times each month. So, the 1st to the 3rd, and the 21st to the 23rd of each month was like PSO two day stuff. But now they changed like how it works for all players and premium users. Before on the first or the third, it was just the same for everybody. Everybody got bonuses for PSO two day. Easy there. But for the 21st to the 23rd, that used to be a premium user exclusive PSO two day. So now they changed it to where all players get to benefit from both PSO two days. But now premium users just get a bonus on top for both PSO2 days. So they changed it up to where they spread out the bonus for everybody. But now premium just gets like a bit more on top. And also they took away the monthly material storage that you got on the first of, or like, you know, just when you logged in once a month where it gave you 15 days worth of mat storage. And now it's tied to this PSO2 day stuff. So if you're just like a generic player, you get five days for each PSO2 day. So you get five days from this one and five days from this one. But if you're a premium user, you get the five days from this and an additional five days from being a premium user. So you get 10 days here and 10 days there. So you almost get like the full month of material storage use. So you don't have to spend nearly as much uh, star gems for material storage if you play like, you know, a lot. Or you can just spread out when you use these because they're still like five day passes. So it's like if you're not going to play for a few days, then maybe you would hold on using uh, a match storage, you know, every so often during a month. But yeah, like premium users are going to have like a little bit easier of a time, like getting like drops during that period and like fixes. But, you know, it's RDR is cope anyways, pretty much. But I think it's more just about this stuff than it is about the boost. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I feel like the 50 extra star gems, uh, the extra match storage. And the color change passes. Yeah, everybody gets everybody gets this. Premium users gets this on top, but they get this stuff as well. And yeah, for premium, now, yeah, there's also going to be like stuff in the AC stores during these times and extra little whatevers. <laughs> like I, I think I can check right now. Yeah, this quest SP set. Yeah, this is like part of PSO two days now. And it says right there, PSO2 day. So this gives, like, RDR boosts and Augment Transfer Pass vouchers, Masetta boosts, and Rappy Shaped Fritters. So if you want, like, a ton of boost-like things, you can buy that for 800 AC. You can buy it up to five times for each PSO2 day. And there's also uh, a cheaper character storage. Uh, you get that five times every PSO2 day. Uh, 600. 
uh, to get 50 extra character storage. Then yeah. massively changed, I think, That's for the better. That's all for this episode of NGS Headline. So just like every time PSO2 Day happens, everybody can benefit. And Operations uh, so yeah, Team. I think that was everything. Don't forget. All right, it looks like the next one is on the 1st of October, so quite a while. Yeah, this was definitely just like, uh, you know, just a whatever month. Uh, there isn't like a whole lot going on this time. So I don't know if I'd really recommend for anybody to like hop into the game. Like there is the, the item enhancement support campaign. So if you jump in right now, then you can make use of that with the extra enhancement for your gear and the fixing augments a lot easier. Well, I won't say a lot easier, a little bit easier. Okay, yeah, there just like isn't like a whole lot happening. I would personally wait for October instead of hopping in September. Because like the bigger things is just like a new rank of a existing four-man quest which does have like some new little features to it little attacks i think it's gonna be not too crazy and then like there's ltqs which like the angel like the new angel thing like looks cool the ordinal tower this one uh you know i don't know like with, with like the gimmicks and stuff i'm not so sure if those gimmicks are gonna be like interesting if it's gonna be like reuse gimmicks from other stuff or like new kind of gimmicks. Uh, I mean, it looks like there's something like falling in this from the ceiling back there. It looks like it's using some of the stuff from uh, Nuisance Plant as well. So I think it's gonna be a mixture of like new mechanics and old mechanics. I think the Ordinal Tower will probably be the most uh fun thing, <laughs> or at least a little bit longer lasting, as long as the rewards aren't shit, because <laughs> the rewards matter. Because like. Something can be fun, but like part of the fun is also getting some nice loot at the end, you know, make it worth your time. I mean, I personally like new stuff for Line Strike, but you know, Line Strike is just kind of like meh for a lot of people. It's like whatever, it's not the main game, which is like a little mini game that I think they're putting the, like way too much into. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much about it. Like, I think like the bigger point was just knowing what's ahead with uh, the operation report, like knowing the Exelio and the Cassis armors. Like, when they are evolving, it's going to take everything, pretty much, besides, like, color variant, whatever. But it's going to take, like, all the upgrades, like, enhancement, fix, uh, potential, uh, multi-weapon, all of that stuff. The augments, too. I think that really helps that situation. I wish, in the past, with Kzar, that was the case for the Rocks weapons. But, that you know, they had to learn their lesson first, I guess, even though they already knew how to do it in base game. Well, you know, whatever. But yeah, it looks like they learned their lesson from Kzar to now to where everything is going to transfer in. So much, much better with that. I was kind of worried they're going to screw up again. Um, so it's a safe bet to upgrade into these, I think. I think it's going to be like the gear that everyone will kind of move into. The thing that I'm curious about, though, is like what, it's, what is it going to take to upgrade these into the new tier of things? Like, what is it going to take to exchange with the item trader to boost them up? Like, it's going to be, like, a long grind, because that's kind of what they implied. Is it going to be, like, something, like, a new item that we need to obtain, or something that we can already get? Yeah, they haven't really specified that. But, yeah, like, the EX Augment feature thing, like, making it easier to search, very good. Yeah, th this being permanent is good as well, but it's, like, you know, in December, so it's going to be a while from now. It's going to be a while. I don't know, I was more happy about the things that aren't happening yet. <laughs> <laughs> than I was about the month itself. So I was saved by questions. Yeah, I guess I, that, that's how you could put it. Because without the questions, like if the questions were garbage, then I think like the only thing that would really stand out is like Ordinal Tower and like the Angel thing, I guess. And kind of Dalian. Like, like those three things kind of. Like without it, it would be like probably <laughs> like a 3 out of 10 or something. But with the questions, I think I agree with what I saw from other people. Is like this headline is like a six out of ten. You know, maybe you could squeeze that to a seven out of ten or something. Like it's like it's about average, uh, average had headline. You know, whatever. Like the the good questions outweigh the lack of stuff happening. I think, and it was already expected to not have a lot. But this is just like one of those months where a lot of things don't happen because the previous month there was things happening. Like, there was the whole new Mars action system, and Line Strike before that, in the previous month there, you know, the new high rank for Alio, the Lucille Exploration Expansion, Nameless Ex Exploration Expansion, yada, yada, yada. That stuff was added 
So I didn't really expect a whole lot with this month. So I'm not like disappointed per se because I knew it was going this route because <laughs> it happens this time every year pretty much. Honestly, don't see this much getting much until 2025. Yeah, I mean, based on the roadmap here, I think the same thing. <laughs> there just really isn't much. Like, it seems like the, the bigger months for the rest of the year is like October because the Stia thing, Tector expansion, that level cap raise, that item map feature, which is now an item trader feature with like the, the weapon and armor. So there's going to be stuff like there. And. I guess like this high difficulty solo quest thing, which we don't know much about. And then there's like the tech arts customization expansion, force expansion, and then like the colossal boss oppression urgent quest, whatever that's supposed to be here with the level cap raise to 100. That's like the, the last things that I can see that's like something noteworthy. Level 100 equals game over. We're getting, nah, I also think, uh, yeah, we're getting beyond that i don't know like 200 but i do think that two, 200 would be like the upper limit i mean honestly though like level doesn't really matter in this game <laughs> level doesn't really do anything besides be a gate keep for equipping stuff like that is all that it does like it's just a equip condition in this game it doesn't give you like skill points it doesn't give you like you know new abilities you know every few levels whatever it's just this and like negligible stats like plus one or two into like attack or something when you have like 3000 <laughs> like it doesn't really do much anymore it used to be a little bit more significant at earlier levels but you know lately since level like 75 it's done like nothing we need more gates being kept yeah is that, is that so um yeah i don't think that really anything's gonna happen until like into 2025 I think June, once again, is just like always like a big month for uh, NGS. So I think that's when the next big thing is going to happen. The biggest disappointment for me, though, like with what's happening with the rest of this year, is that there's no story, no mention of it. So I don't, I don't think there's going to be any stories just like, or just kind of bumbling around, messing with, you know, a new thing here or there, which might last like a week for those said things. Like some of these are like permanent additions to stuff, like the expansions to classes or the tech art customization, but yeah, we're, we're just waiting. You know, as as we have been with this game, we're just waiting for the better things to come. Uh, maybe we'll, uh, you know, get our socks knocked off with some of this stuff. You know, maybe the solo quest is just gonna be really good, or like this colossal boss is gonna be really good. But I think that just cope because we've coped like that in the past, and then it wasn't, you know, delivered. You know, the, the expectations were not met. So I am done doing that. I'm just going to say it just as it has been. It's like it, you know, it could be, but I'm not expecting it to be. So yeah, there wasn't a whole lot. There's not a whole lot. If I was to compare it with, like, all of the headlines ever, this would definitely be towards the bottom. So in terms of, like, looking at it that way, then yes, this would be, like, a 2 out of 10, 3 out of 10. But in terms of, like, expectations... Like, I was expecting nothing, and there's just, like, a little bit that seemed interesting. So, it was, like, an average, like, you know, 5, 10, 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10 kind of thing. Just because of how my expect expectations are right now. So, I've no I know in the past I've been harsher with headlines. But that was also when I had a little bit more hope for the game or had a little bit more expectations because there was still that copium. I mean, I think I'm kind of in the same boat, Gwendolyn. It's just, like, it's... Doesn't like I just don't really care much anymore. Like I've just been playing like so many other things lately. But yeah, to me the gameplay has gotten like very stale. Like it hasn't changed much. Like they it seems like they've tried some things, like with Mars and the tech customizations. But it either doesn't add enough. It doesn't really add to the stuff. Like it, it doesn't really add to the stuff that was there. Because like with tech tech customizations, the vast majority of them are just stat increases we, we haven't seen a new pa in so long i know people like argue like oh you don't want a whole bunch of pas because then you know, blah 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 but i just want fucking new shit to do <laughs> I, I want new shit to do with the gameplay itself but it still like incorporates my fucking class so like cl 
class skills, PAs, techniques, abilities, blah blah blah. blah. All right, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything else with this. Definitely, definitely just meh. Nothing really much to say about it. It, you know, just another another month of NGS. Just uh, you know how it is.